it's gonna be fast. <laughs> oh man. The Tesla Model S Plaid has been out for nearly two months at this point, and it's still as shocking, quick, and insane as ever. I rented one for two full days, drove over 360 miles in the car, and got to take a few people on test drives who were still not expecting it to be as good as it is. I'll get in depth about the features of this car inside and out, my thoughts while driving, including some awkward things about the car, show you a collection of people's real launch reactions, build quality issues, and more, so let's get into it. The new refreshed 2021 Model S looks largely the same as the Model S has for a long time on the outside. The main difference comes with a wider wheelbase in the rear and an altered front fascia that you can spot if you look close enough. The Model S I reviewed is the Plaid model, Tesla's flagship vehicle, but overall 90% of this video will be reviewing things that both the long range and Plaid models share in common. The only real difference between the two specs is the performance with the Plaid touting a 0 to 60 in as little as 1.99 seconds in the right circumstances making it the quickest production car ever. Aside from that, everything outside and in is standard on every new Model S, so let's take a look. Outside, the Model S looks like it has for a long time. It has four doors, a hatchback trunk, and a frunk. It features a new satin black trim instead of chrome, and this model came in blue with the upgraded 21-inch arachnid wheels. Some special features of the plaid here are the spoiler and plaid badge. There is a large panoramic glass roof, and that hatchback gives tons of storage options, really showcasing how versatile this car is while still being the quickest available. The inside of the Model S is what has changed the most. As far as your view as a driver, more has changed here than any Tesla has in the past, and it's a controversial change for many. The main screen is now a 17-inch horizontal screen with updated software and computing. Next to that is the instrument cluster display, and the biggest, most obvious change is the new steering yoke. This is the wheel in the new Model S, and according to Elon Musk, there will be no option to have another wheel. At first glance, it's an immediate no for many people, but I drove it for two entire days, and I would challenge you to give it a chance before writing it off. It's by no means perfect, but it does have its advantages that we'll get into later in this video. The trim and build of this car is much improved over the the previous Model S and Tesla's more affordable vehicles like the Model 3 and Y. Everything feels very sturdy inside and the white interior really shines. The center console includes many compartments and there is a wireless charger for your phone located right above it. The doors have pockets for water bottles, there's the glove box, and in the rear there's an armrest cup holder situation that can come down when there is no middle passenger. This also has a wireless phone charger, and then right in front of rear passengers is a screen that allows for watching videos or adjusting rear climate controls on screen. Supposedly they will be bringing game to this soon, but that feature is still not enabled in these cars. Everything in this car is incredibly clean, but as always, unfortunately no matter the price, it's still a Tesla. Teslas just do not share build quality in line with their price point, and the Plaid hasn't been the exception that many were hoping for. I'll get more in depth on the build quality issues I've seen later in this video. First, let's talk about just how fun this car is and see what other people think about the Plaid's insane 0 to 60 in around two seconds. I picked up some friends and my parents while I had the car and got some real reactions. Everyone was prepped, I told them it's insane, feels like a roller coaster, they need to put their head back and more, and here are those reactions, including some initial reactions to the yoke. So this is my wife, Jessica, who's heard me talk about this car nonstop for the past year, so let's see what she thinks. And the white seats are so nice. Are these like the aerated seats too? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh god! <laughs> that's so fast. We didn't even go that far. Like it was just so fast. Yeah, that was uh, zero to sixty. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that one's another level. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take some breaths. <laughs> I know you warned me, but I didn't really think it yeah, would be. That's how it is. We could do it again. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> What? It's like, dude, that's, that's like scary. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a spaceship. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm 
Emotionless. <laughs> oh. Emotionless. Emotionless. <laughs> Did not work. <laughs> My butt feels amazing. Yeah. I didn't know cooling seats was a thing. Yeah. See all these little like. That's honestly. The that's the thing I'm most impressed by. So <laughs> is he calling it a launch? Is that just a Tesla thing, or is that a the actual car trip? Because I've only ever heard it from Teslas. Yeah. Like it sounds like Elon got mixed up. And he's like, oh, we have a launch today. I'm oh, sorry. I'm talking about cars, not the, not the rockets. I'm sorry. We'll do one, and then I'll ask you. Would you consider that a launch? I get it. It's gonna be fast. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! Oh, 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 oh my gosh! <laughs> I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. That was crazy. Can you see was, why it's called a launch now? That was yeah. faster. That was faster than the one at uh, at Knotts. What's the one called the Knotts? Like the accelerator? Yeah. The tingly in my drawers. <laughs> watch the screen, it has this whole animation. It's hard to watch the screen. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's happening. Set, go. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> That makes no sense. <laughs> that, no. If you make a call, make sure my life insurance premiums are paid up here. Alright. Oh, oh, I'm gonna walk home. I gotta change my shorts. This thing's almost as fast as the Remac Nevera. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy <laughs> dude, feels like a roller coaster. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, it's so insane. The yoke is the most controversial part of this car because it's changing something that cars have had since anyone can remember. It's one of those why change it type of things, but after driving it for two days, I think I almost get it. It was already kind of weird going back to a normal wheel after returning this car, and I can see it becoming normal in about a week of driving. Here are my thoughts on the yoke while using it. All right, so I have been driving with the yoke for maybe 30 minutes now, and overall it's awesome. And when you're doing 90% of your driving or 80% or whatever, when you're just doing slight turns and going around curves and stuff, it's awesome and it feels amazing. It's once you have to cross over that it does get weird and I don't think anyone can argue that it's better than a steering wheel in that sense. Also, I'm still getting used to the blinker buttons. I still have to look down. So right here, I'm turning right and kind of just put my hand on the bottom of the wheel. Uh, that's kind of what I found to make the most sense when you're doing like a full 45 degree turn. So in this situation, I really love this wheel. When you're just doing your normal turns and going around curves, it really puts you in a great position and I actually love driving this car, especially this way, especially since it's so fast. So another big part of this steering wheel is the fact that there are no stock. There's no blinker stock on this wheel, so you just have these touch sensitive buttons. And after using them for the full day, I'm definitely getting more used to them, but the first half of the day, I still had to look. I still had the muscle memory of like, let me touch a stock. Then I was like, oh no, let me turn left with a touch sensitive button. I have to look where that is. So looking for where that is, is never gonna be the preferred option. I've gotten used to it to where right turn, left turn, I think I was right. Another thing that can be a little frustrating is just that there's a position that you're not able to hold the wheel. And that is when you are resting here and you wanna put your thumbs here. You just can't do that because all of a sudden, Oh, well now I'm resting and nothing's signaling. 
So I guess that works, but there it signaled. You're just gonna randomly be signaling if you do it on the other side. All, you know, all this stuff is happening because I'm just trying to rest my thumbs on the steering wheel. So there's a position that I, you just can't rest your thumbs on the steering wheel. And that's just what it is because they went with touch sensitive buttons. So this screen overall is great. I think it's much better than what they have in the Model 3 and Model Y. And you can just feel it in how quick everything is. Like bringing that up is just so much faster than it is on the Model 3 or the Model Y. Um, and then navigating places, everything is super quick, bringing out menus. I really like it a lot and music. And then you can just tap to open it for full screen, drag it over here and you're good to go. And as you can see right now, I'm demonstrating all that screen stuff and I'm just using the yoke like this with my hand in the bottom left. And this works great. It's a comfortable position. And then when you're really feeling it, you go like this. If you're going to do some kind of launch, you go like this. It's really just turns. And so let's do some turns. I'm gonna pull a U-turn right here. I don't know what I did, but it worked. I will say that it probably looks more awkward than it feels. And as much as I'm talking about it being weird when it flips over, if you like change and you think these cars are really fun, like I do, you'll get used to it and like it. Uh, I already kind of wish I could have this. It's, it's just fun that it's different for some reason. All right, so now we got to turn around. So we don't have stocks and we have a yoke. Let's see how I do it. Yeah, it's like it's almost just the best to do it with the hand that's underneath. I've definitely gotten used to the yoke. I used it all day yesterday. Doing this kind of stuff is not that weird at all. So I'm a big fan of how much screen real estate we have up here. Um, I really like having Spotify just up here at all times. It doesn't have to disappear from my maps uh, to stay. They're over here if I want, or they're over here on the instrument cluster. and. Still getting used to that because I'm not used to looking there, but that worked. And also that was a signal that I did subconsciously, didn't think about it. I just did the signal the right way. I also really like that I can raise the suspension at the touch of two taps. Because like right here, this driveway is a little, little steep and I don't want to bottom out. So raise the suspension. So one big thing that is a surprise is that hitting here, that is not a horn. That is simply the airbag and nothing else. And Marquez Brownlee talked about this in his review, and I agree with him that the second nature thing when someone's cutting you off and it's like you're avoiding an accident is to just quickly, boom, hit the horn and nothing happens, you know? So I think what you need to do is just recalibrate your mind to do that, but over here, because you're most likely gonna hit the horn button, I guess. I've heard people say that if you cover it, hover your hand over, it'll honk cover all the buttons. Nothing is happening. I just hit a voice command on accident. Maybe that's a feature they will add, but it doesn't seem like it has the sensor for that. Most people that are doing that are probably just hitting it by accident. They're just going like this and their first finger is hitting the horn button like that. Okay. So right now I'm in some canyons. I guess I should have expected it, but definitely the most fun I've ever had in a Tesla driving in some canyons. It's already fun in a Model Y. It's fun, especially in a Model 3 for me. But this Model S and with the yoke just takes it to another level and it really, really emphasizes driving and makes it a lot of fun. So on this wheel, we have, of course, the blinkers, which are the big ones. We also have brights right here. So I can just tap them and it brings up our settings. And then if I hold this, it flashes my brights. Then on the right side of the wheel here, we have horn, an indicator for autopilot, the scroll wheel, of course, windshield wipers and voice commands. Now there are these little lines here that stick out. So it kind of shows your thumb and maybe that's the place that you can rest your thumb. Although I tried resting my thumb and now I'm pressing the blinker over here. Yeah, but this scroll wheel now is slightly different because voice commands have moved over here. So you press this button for a voice command and then windshield wipers are here as well. Tap this to bring up windshield wipers. 
but the right scroll wheel is dedicated to autopilot. On a Model 3 and Y, it's autopilot plus press for a voice command, and now it is 100% autopilot. So you scroll up for your autopilot set speed, you click right and left, supposedly for following distance, but it's not doing it right now. I tried it on the freeway and there's no indicator that I'm changing following distance. So that is probably something they need to add in a software update. But to enter autopilot, you can set it in settings. Let me show you here in autopilot settings. You can choose single click or double click for autopilot. Right now it's on single click, so I just press once. Now I'm in autopilot. And it's especially crazy to see autopilot working when it's a yoke wheel as opposed to a round wheel. Because the round wheel, you know, it turns, but it's still the same shape. This one, you see that autopilot is truly turning this far for you because the entire wheel is a jar that way. Again, one of my favorite features of this car that the Model S has had for a long time is just being able to raise the suspension whenever you need. So if you're coming into a really steep driveway or just some kind of bump, and you want to be sure that you don't damage the underside of your car, you just press raise suspension and it's going to do that. And you can also click this button to save location. And so next time you're at this spot, it's automatically going to raise the suspension for you. For acceleration, you have chill, sport, and plaid. And then drag strip mode is going to heat up the battery. I believe it's heating up. Whatever it is, it's preconditioning the battery specifically to optimize it for performance. The suspension settings are really nice. It's been in the Model S like this for a while, but it seems that this graph and how much you can customize it is a little improved here. Uh, I have it on comfort right now, but you can of course go auto, sport, or advanced. And advanced lets you dial in all of these settings. So ride height, I can choose. Right now it's only letting me choose medium or low because high is only available under 35 miles per hour. And then very high is only available under 15 miles per hour. But I can dial in ride comfort to soft and comfort or if I'm feeling incredibly sporty, I can go as firm as possible and all the way over to sport. And then of course you could bring up your camera at any time with the largest button on the controls panel. What I do like about this, and it's taken getting used to, but on the Model 3 and Y, you have to aim for that little X in the corner if you want to close that out. In this one, you just swipe down like an iPad on anything. So my music right here, swipe down. My maps are gonna stay as my default, but I can bring up the camera. I can move the camera over here, swipe down, done. Super nice, fast, easy to use user interface, feels just like an iPad, but like an iPad Pro. Feels like the normal iPad, feels like the Model 3 and Y. This feels like an iPad Pro, where you just feel that different refresh rate and everything is a little bit zippier. Overall, the rest of the apps and stuff are pretty much exactly what they are on the Model 3 and Y, they're just slightly moved around. So like Spotify doesn't have any extra functionality, but you know, I can move it over here. It's a little bit nicer to look at, and then if I want to change my audio sources, I can do so there. It's definitely different than what it is on the Model 3 and Y. As you can see, I got better and more comfortable with the yoke after driving it for a while. Certain turns are never going to be optimal, but the vast majority of driving is optimal. For me, it feels similar to how charging works on an electric car, which this is. The vast majority of the time you plug in at home, don't have to stop for gas, and actually save a lot of time. Then in the cases where you need to drive further than the Model S's EPA estimated range, you'll have to stop and charge at a supercharger. Usually you can plan this well to use the bathroom and eat while charging, but it does take longer than filling up with gas, whether you like it or not. Usually it isn't much longer, but it isn't a quick five minute fill up. This trade off is well worth it because for the vast majority of my daily drive, I charge at home and save time. The same is true with the yoke for me. Are U-turns, three-point turns, and others awkward to get used to and not as optimal as a round wheel? Yes, but those are corner cases, and the majority of the time I'm not driving like this. Using the yoke for anything under about 90 degrees is incredibly fun and a better experience than a normal steering wheel. Even my dad said the same thing after watching me use it for some time. Regarding the interface on screen, some things take a bit of getting used to, and some things need fixes via software updates. First, there are missing features such as active noise cancelling, which is supposedly arriving very soon. Second is gaming. The rear screen can't currently game as promised, and the front screen doesn't feature any new games to show off its PS5 level gaming. Then there are weird things such as moving windows around on screen. I love that you can do this, but one example where it's really awkward is if I have this small music window on one side of the screen and want to move it to the other side, I can do so by clicking this flip button in the bottom right corner. That works well. However, if there is a passenger in the car, this disappears and my only method is to open up the small window, get into the full screen mode, drag that to the other side, close it down to the smaller window, and then close that back down to the smallest window. Now it's on the other side. 
Just an insane way to make that work, and an easy solution would be to allow you to drag any window of any size all around the screen, or leave that swap button on at any time. The new interface feels a lot more like an iPad, and it's a very big change for Tesla, so some certain kinks and bugs like this make sense up front. Now, I've talked all about what makes this car great, and let's finish that up and get to some negatives. It's a beautiful car with lots of storage options, a very responsive and versatile screen, great ventilated seats on a hot day, absolutely ridiculous performance, and more. It's fully electric, so it's zero emissions and gets up to 406 miles of range on a charge with the long range model. For charging options, Tesla has their ever expanding supercharger network that makes charging incredibly easy and quick. When I stopped to supercharge, I was shocked at how quick it was compared to my Model Y, but I didn't take down actual numbers, so that's just anecdotal. Driving this car is the best part about it, and the Model S in particular shows how much fun electric cars can be. One pedal driving is incredibly handy and makes your drive seamless. On top of those features is autopilot. This particular Model S was equipped with basic autopilot, and it worked just as well as I've seen in any other Tesla doing great great lane keeping on the freeway. It did feel like it cornered better than my Model Y, but that's probably less related to autopilot and more related to the shape of this vehicle. Now, with every Tesla, there are all of these positives, and I'm a big fan of them, but we still can't ignore build quality issues. If you're a stickler for perfect panel gaps and more, you'll find these to be an issue, but for most people, you can either get past them to enjoy the vehicle or schedule Tesla service to fix them after delivery. This Model S had a pretty noticeable rattle in the rear door, and closing the passenger side front door was really difficult. Almost nobody got in the car and closed it right the first time, and I had difficulty after doing it multiple times. The owner even mentioned it popping open randomly when and parked one time. I don't have footage of it, but on the initial Model S Plaid I reviewed, there was a piece in the rear under the center screen that was fully out of place at delivery. I've seen two other Plaid Model S's in person as well, and I went into Detail Union when they had one there to check it out. According to them, it was the worst Tesla paint job they have ever seen delivered to a customer. There was overspray all over the vehicle, and you especially noticed it on the windows and pillars. There was a lot of scratching, residue from a wrap or tape that had been on the car, bubbling in certain parts of the paint, and marks from wet sanding. On top of that, they could clearly see that the entire left side of this car was repainted after the fact, but before getting to the customer. From a distance, you can't really tell, but up close, it was pretty clear that this was delivered in less than desirable condition. They also pointed out a very odd feature of the new Model S, which is that when the mirrors fold in, they reveal a Phillips head screw. This probably only unscrews a portion of the mirror, but still, literally anyone can walk up to the parked car and take this screw out. That's not a build quality issue as much as it is an interesting design choice. I also saw another Model S that had a loose button on the rear hatch, a crazy trim alignment up front, and a trunk that was having trouble closing. All of this to say it's business as usual for the new launch of a car from Tesla. Build quality issues are still there on the Plaid Model S. Sure, maybe I happen to see three of the worst new Model S's that Tesla delivered, but that's not how it should ever be for a $130,000 vehicle. I still love these cars though and hope to buy my own Plaid Model S to review on this channel, but I'd be ignoring a big reality if I didn't talk about build quality issues that I've seen on every single one. This new Model S is at all-time high pricing and demand right now, starting at $89,990, with a delivery date of March to April for the long-range model. Again, this model features nearly everything I showed you about this car today. The only difference is that your launches will be about 1.1 seconds slower. Oh man. The Plaid model starts at $129,990, with a delivery estimate of January to February, according to Tesla. Overall, this refresh of the Model S is exactly what I think it needed. Even when I got the Model Y, I would drive the old Model S and feel how outdated the interior was. It felt like a car that Tesla hadn't updated in a while, which it was, and now it feels like Tesla's newest car that justifies its price. Again, there are still some build quality quirks and issues about Tesla's, and the new Model S is no exception from what I've seen, but the car as a whole is an incredible automobile. If you're skeptical about the yoke but also curious, I'd definitely give it a try for at least two days, because at the end of my second day, I wanted it. At the very least, I'll definitely rent one again to do more reactions, but I might be able to get one for the channel, so make sure you're subscribed to see all of the videos I'll be bringing out about the new Model S. In the meantime, you can check out the latest Tesla news by clicking the video linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.